No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Just one verse today, Matthew 6, 24, but an incredibly challenging one, especially to us in the West, who have been raised as though through our mother's milk on capitalism, consumerism and materialism. These are our norms. And of course, our whole economic system is based on the predictability of human greed. And the God of mammon, the God of wealth, prosperity, success and money is one of the key gods in our pantheon. But Jesus says, no, if you want to live the life of Christ, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, then you cannot worship both God and money. You have to choose which it's going to be, which you give precedence to, which you love, which you honour, which you worship, which you obey. You can't have it both ways. So make the choice. And that's a very challenging aspect to Jesus' call to discipleship. Often he connected that call to what we did with our stuff. I think of most radically and challengingly those verses such as Luke 12, 33, where he says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Luke 14, verse 33, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Luke 18, verse 22, sell your possessions and give to the poor. In other words, disciples of Jesus are to be open handed with what they have generous to redress the balance between the rich and the poor. And that's very challenging for us to hear. But hear it we must. Very often we're tempted to palm this off and say this is a challenge for other people who are, who are rich and the rich are those who are richer than I. And sometimes that means that those who have genuinely give, been given a calling by God to make money and to use money and to be kingdom patrons with money, to use it to release the kingdom and are generous, are those people feel like second class citizens. We need to be careful about that because it's not just the rich who are in danger of being in love with money and the God of mammon. It can be the poor just as much. Those who might, for example, be very overly anxious about money or jealous about the wealth of others. Those who are pernickety and frugal to a fault. Um, perhaps those who, who have spent too much and are now in debt. Maybe it will be in the way it discolours the gospel, uh, those who sign up to a prosperity gospel, or more subtly, those who like a slick and snazzy service and end up being consumers of church and church hopping around. All of these ways uh, are ways in which the gospel of money seeps insidiously into our lives and our value system. We've been raised with it. So the question and challenge this week is, how has the love and worship of money, the worship of mammon, crept into our spirituality? And what steps can we take this week to root it out?